Okay, hello everybody. Um, first things first, uh, before we get started with this Ask, I do want to say, um, this Ask Tuesday is a little different. Um, it's incredibly long. So in the future, um, as you know, if I keep getting as many questions as I've been getting, um, I'm good. I'm just gonna keep it, you know, at a minimum of maybe five or six questions per episode, and then I'll see what I can do in the meantime to maybe try and answer some of those other questions. Either I'll just answer it on YouTube, or maybe I'll do another video. I don't know. Anyway, this is actually Tuesday that I'm saying this to you. The video I did, I was thinking about doing it on Friday, so to do like an extra video, an in-between video, to maybe um, field some of those questions. So, anyway, um, that's it. Uh, this is the new tutorial that I just did um, and finished videotaping. Um, it's a cardigan. It's very pretty. It came out so nice. The fabric is so beautiful. Um, it's almost kind of see-through. Well, it is see-through. But anyway, um, that's done. So the only thing I have left to do for this Friday's video is um, the sheath dress and then taking it in showing how to do the alterations on that so other than that uh, that is it please enjoy this video please like it favorite it comment on it um, and you know tell your friends that so about me if they have questions come answer or come ask me questions I know school is starting now you got fashion needs to friends you're taking fashion classes tell them come ask me questions that they have about class their teachers explaining something that they don't really understand. Now I will tell you ahead of time I don't really know much about the marketing side of fashion as far as um, and also the financial side of fashion. I'm not big on that so please don't ask me those questions. But anything that has to do with like little sewing tips and stuff or um, what else? Do, 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 do sewing tips, pattern making tips and stuff I can help with. Anyway that's it. Let's get started. Let's get on to answering questions. Okay, so question number one is from Blue Pisces one, and they say, ah, thank you so much for the advice. You pretty much got me nailed by all that you said on sewing. Um, I rarely, though, leave a project unsewed, however. I am too impatient to leave it alone and not sew it. I will, however, keep trying and I will try to get out of my comfort zone. I'm determined to be a very good, if not great, sewer. Thank you again for the advice, and I look forward to more of your vids. And she left me a smiley face. So, <clears throat> thank you so much for your kind words. Um, I answered your question, I think, on the last video. Um, I forgot what it was about. Please don't hate me. But, um, but anyway, you're very... Oh, I remember. It was the one about being a beginner, and do I have any tips and stuff. And Yeah. Um, just be careful when you're sewing, that's all. And the more careful you are, you'll you'll catch a lot of your mistakes beforehand. So try not to rush through your projects. Take your time, make sure you understand everything, make sure you go slowly, and you'll pick up speed over time. The more you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over, you'll pick up speed because your mind will just kind of go on autopilot. So, anywho. Um, you're very welcome, and I don't know about this being a very good, if not great sewer thing. You can be a great sewer. Anybody can be a great sewer. Sewing is really not hard. Just like math, even though math can get really complicated, math really isn't all that hard. It's just the basic steps like the PEMDAS. I don't know if you, you guys ever learned about PEMDAS. If you just do the basic, like the parentheses, the exponents, multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction, you can pretty much do anything. And then after that, it's just the different formulas. That's all math is. It's really not that hard. So um, it's just tedious. So, and sewing is the same way. It's just tedious. It's not hard, though. Anywho, next question. <laughs> you can be great. Next question <laughs> um, is from Chanks. 29, this is a frequent question person, and they said, oh yeah, my question, I was trying to sew a stretch knit, straight stitch, or with a straight stitch, I guess they're saying, um, but it ended up looking curvy, wavy, and slightly distorted. I know I'm a beginner at this, but could it also be the needle size or the type of thread, if there is such a thing? Yes, there is different needle sizes, or are different needle sizes, and there are different thread sizes, and 
um, different fabrics and different everything. So, um, what the problem is with that is, number one, um, your presser foot is pressing hard on the fabric and it's stretching. Um, so the fabric is basically taking its, you know, physical properties with it being able to stretch and when you're sewing a straight stitch it's being pressed down as it's being sewn and so it's being sewn in its stretched state so when you sew it in a stretched state and then you take it off of the machine it's going to stay stretched because that's how it's sewn okay um, now in order to um, not have to deal with that your best bet would be to get a serger because the serger doesn't stretch the fabric as it sews well, let me take that back. It depends on what the serger is set on, but you can set it in a way to where it won't stretch the fabric as it's sewing it. You can set it to a way where it will actually gather the fabric as it's sewing it. So you can definitely make it not stretch the fabric because the difference between, or the middle point between gathering the fabric while you're sewing it and stretching it while you're sewing it would be not doing anything to it and just leaving it alone. So, but the good thing about serging, it's perfect for stretch fabric, especially if it has that the um, the double needle stitch, which gives you like a safety lock stitch, which basically um, is like sewing and serging the fabric. A lot of times you'll hear something, you'll hear terms like sew and serge, and that's basically all it's talking about is the two needles. If you just have the one needle and then the loopers then that really isn't going to hold through the daily use of that garment. You need the second stitch because the second stitch acts like a regular sewn stitch and then the stitch after that acts more like you're, you know, holding your serging in, even though they both hold the serging. Anywho, get a serger. Um, second, if you can't get a serger right away, because um, I think mine was at least like $200. Um, if you can get a serger right away, use like a walking foot, which will take the pressure off of the fabric when you're sewing it. Um, I haven't used one ever. Um, I have one. I just haven't used it. And it's, it looks like... It looks like if I grab the right one, which I'm pretty sure I did... It looks like this. This is your walking foot. And it basically just moves the fabric along at the same pace as the feed dogs. Because you can see the feed dogs rest on these two lines here, but coming from the bottom. So as the fabric is sewing and the feed dogs are going, the, the, the presser foot will go along with it instead of pushing and opposing the feed dogs. I guess. Because normally when you're sewing, the presser foot will press down and then the feed dog will kind of go like this. So you can see, basically it's creating this motion. You know, and then your fabric is kind of left in the middle where with the walking foot, it basically is going to work with it, with the feed dogs. Do you see how that works? So that'll keep it from stretching. Um, walking foot is also good for your fabrics that you have that are real slinky and slidey and they piss you off because they won't stop moving and stuff like satins and velcros and stuff that are slippery fabrics um, it will work with those fabrics so that way when you have you know your pins in them and stuff it won't stretch the fabric out of shape number one um, and number two it'll just it'll keep the fabric going with it so you won't have any slippage when you pin the fabric right here or maybe there's a space in between where you pinned it and now you have something looking like you get like you tried to ease the fabric and you didn't try to do that but it's because your fabric is slippery and your presser foot is pressing down so hard on it so anyway that's long-winded answer walking foot or a serger get some of those okay <coughs> Um, do, 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 do. Your needle and your thread don't really have as much to do with stretching the fabric as what's holding the fabric does. Your needle and your thread just has to do with whether you're getting a good stitch 
in your fabric. So if you can use the ballpoint needle in your fabric, do that. Um, if not, a lot of times the universal needle will still work. I really don't change my needle out, to be honest. I really don't change my needle out, going from stretches to uh, regular fabrics. I don't do anything. So anyway, I don't really change my thread. I use like the same like cotton polyester button on everything. Anywho. Um, do, 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 um, you are a wealth of information. This is coming from S. Sarge 2. I answered one of her questions in the other video. And she says, you are a wealth of information. Thank you. I had never heard that you should cut out your pattern right away to prevent possible distortion of grain lines. I purchased some fabric from Vogue Fabrics in Chicago a while back, and they don't always cut it like the fabric stores do. They rip it, that way it stays on grain. I now do that whenever the grain line is in question. Are there some fabrics that won't tear? When working with a plaid, is there a good way to cut that out so that the lines match? Yes, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. <laughs> um, okay, so let me go back through your question. Um, I had never heard that you should cut out your pattern right away to prevent possible distortion of the grain lines. Okay, that part may, I might have said it funny in the other video. I didn't really mean that, okay, you go and buy your fabric and then you need to cut your pattern out immediately, even though you still should because the fabric could rot by the time you get to it. And now you have rotten fabric and you've sewn this beautiful garment and taken all your time on it. And as soon as somebody puts it on, it rips. And it's not because of anything you did, it's just because the fabric probably isn't that good. Especially, for instance, <coughs> if you just sewn this seam, okay, so let's say you have this seam that you just sewed together, okay, then as soon as somebody puts it on, it rips like that. Well, the seam didn't rip open, it ripped next to the seam, or right on where your stitching was. So that doesn't mean that you stitched it wrong, it means that the fabric was rotten. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? And or the garment would, could have been too tight, because that happens too. But if you know the garment doesn't have all these stress lines on it, if the garment doesn't look like this when somebody puts it on, then it really shouldn't. It's not that tight. Like this is a garment that's too tight. That's too tight. Okay. But if you have a decent amount of room in it and it looks like this, you can usually tell the garment isn't too tight when it's for the most part flat against the body. It might have a little bit of room in it too and that ease will keep it from being too tight too. But if it's looking like this and the person goes to bend over and it rips, you can tell that it was the stitch if the stitch rips, if the stitching comes out. If the fabric rips, then either it's too tight or your fabric is rotten. Okay. Anywho, okay. Um, now, what I meant was that, as far as the fabric and the cutting it out, was that, okay, you buy your fabric, put your pattern down, you cut it out, and then you don't sew it. That's what I meant. You will get lots of stretching around the neckline, any place on the garment that goes across a um, diagonal will stretch a lot. Um, and depending on the fabric, some fabrics stretch more than others. Um, a lot of times your tighter weaves won't stretch as much as your looser weaves. Your looser weave doesn't have all the other stacking of threads or yarn you know, per row or whatever. Just like, for instance, if you take some 500 thread count sheets and you try to make something out of it, they're not going to stretch as quickly as something with um, 100 thread count. You know, it doesn't have as many threads stacked in there, so it's more liable to just scoot over a little bit because there's there's a lot of room between each thread. Anywho, but yes, that's what I meant. So any place. Like this isn't a woven garment, so it's not going to be exactly the same. That's the other answer that I'm getting to. Stretch knits, nine times out of ten, won't stretch out of shape. If you cut it and then don't sew it immediately, you usually won't have that much problem with stretch knits because they're not just a regular weave like this. Stretch knits are more like a cable lock type weave like this. 
and so when you cut it you still have all these other cable locks next to it so you might have cable lock like this and then you cut it you still you might have an edge right here but all these threads are still locked together so it won't stretch the same way a what you call it does and the stretch comes from you have these you know it's locked like this and then you know you can stretch it and then the lock has tension in it. When the lock, when the when the knit is relaxed, then that's when the stre the, the 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 stretch bounces back. Sorry, that's a lot of information. <laughs> Anywho, um, <laughs> uh, okay. So yes, necklines will stretch in woven fabrics. Your armhole will stretch, and this will give you a lot of grief, especially if you're trying to attach this to it, uh, a, a sleeve to it. Um, your side seams will stretch. Because a lot of times in your woven patterns, or patterns that go for woven stuff, the side is a di diagonal. It's not a straight side. It's usually a diagonal side so that it fits a little better. Also, your hip curve will stretch at the top of the hip. Um, and I think that's pretty much it at the hip. And also, let's say you have a skirt that's like a flared skirt. There's another diagonal there coming out of your flared skirt. That's going to stretch. Your waistline is going to stretch because your waistline is the curve a lot of times. All those curves in your garment, they're going to stretch. So if you're going to, if you're planning on making something, either don't cut it out until you're ready to sew it or if you cut it out, go ahead and sew it up immediately. You know, okay. Um, anywho, Okay, so I purchased some fabric from Vogue Fabrics in Chicago a while back and they don't always cut it like the fabric stores do. They rip it. That way it stays on grain. Uh, I now do that whenever the grain line is in question. Are there some fabrics that won't tear? <coughs> Once again, the reason why, the same reason that your fabric will stretch is the same reason that it will tear. Um, so woven fabrics that stretch usually when you cut them out because the the threads shift and they move I hope I'm saying it right um, because they stretch and they move those same fabrics if you snip it here you have this whole line that you could just rip whoosh, and it'll rip right across and then you'll be left with the rest of it and this part is gone and now you just have this down here okay now if you try to rip this it's not gonna work <laughs> this there's no nothing that there's no order to it so trying to rip that is not gonna work for you it's gonna work against you and you're just gonna end up stretching your fabric way out of whack and it's gonna look all crazy and distorted um, so yeah, woven fabrics, nine times out of ten will stretch, I mean will rip. Um, that I'm not too keen, well, it depends on the uh, weave. Because, for instance, like denim, as far as I know, you cannot rip denim. Denim is strong for a reason and it comes from the weave. It's not a regular weave like this. I think even the, the denim weave is similar to like the knits because it's a twill what do you call it? Twill weave. <laughs> um but it's 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 not just your regular up and down, up and down and that's it. It's it's woven more into like this crazy, crazy pattern. So that's not gonna rip. Your regular fabrics like muslin, that's not muslin but muslin and cotton and stuff like that. Your um this is made out of muslin. This is made out of muslin. Um just your regular fabrics, your cotton woven whatever's they will rip. You can snip them on one end and just rip it. And use it but also remember when you rip something, don't just rip with one hand, like okay you don't want this fabric up here so you snip it and then you just pull with this hand don't do that because then that's not going to create an even tear because you want it to tear like this not like this 
that's going to be more resistant to tearing and it's actually going to hang on and then you'll have this really funny crazy like wiggly tear coming off of the thing so it'll be like this but it'll be woo 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 so anywho okay so don't if you're going to rip it rip it with both hands um, and make sure it's just a regular weave a lot of times you can tell if it's a regular weave or not because it frays easily like denim does not fray easily you have to physically fray denim um, and okay yeah I'm getting into this really long answer anywho um, yes yeah, some fabrics do tear and some don't okay <laughs> next question um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is from Over 40 Princess, and she says, I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, she says, number one, I need a sewing machine. I don't know if she meant to push number one. But anyway, I need a sewing machine. My computerized one is about dead. I don't need a com computer. Yeah, okay. Um, I want forward, bag, zigzag, buttonholes, and a satin stitch. Rolled hems are for sergers. I also want to work with better fabrics than we have at Joann's. Not knocking them, but there has to be a middle ground. The other choice here is very high end. Online suggestions for mid range quality fabric. I get good thread already. Um, thank goodness. Nothing worse than cheap thread. And as I was saying earlier, um, <laughs> that would be the only thing worse than cheap thread would be rotten fabric. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they work hand in hand. You need a good strong thread and you need some good strong healthy new fabric. Um, uh, blah, 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 what else was I thinking? Yeah, you can find some really good cheap fabric, you know, um, that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg for. But, beware that the cheap fabric is not rotten. Um, a lot of times you can tell if it's like really, really ashy or the more you learn about fabrics, if you know the fabric quality should be one way and it's not, then that's another clue that it's probably rotten. And like corduroys, which was the fabric that I found out that it was rotten before, it should be kind of velvety-ish, um, have a nice pile on it, not be uneven and stuff like that. If it starts to look kind of ashy, I would worry that it might be getting rotten. Um, because corduroy should have like a nice healthy sheen to it. Not a shine, but a nice light luster that, there's a way you can tell whether a, a fabric looks healthy or not. In the same way you can look at a plant and say, okay, you know, this plant looks like it's on the way out when it starts to look dry and doesn't look healthy anymore, and then a nice healthy plant usually it's nice full green and plants aren't shiny but they have a nice healthy sheen to them almost like a light oil that seeps through the whole plant and you can tell it's nice and healthy same thing with fabric anywho long answer again um okay this machine here my good old brother machine can you see it bam brother okay it's really simple it gets the job done. Um, it doesn't have a whole bunch of stitch functions. I, when I was younger, um, I was always like, okay, my next machine I wanted to do, you know, instead of 40 functions, I wanted to do 100 functions. And then the one after that, I wanted to do 200 functions. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting things to be better every time ahead. But there is something to be said for just having your basic machine that can just straight stitch like you said, straight stitch back, forward, zigzag, buttonhole, and we're done. You know, that's really all you need. And all this stuff that I made, even like the garment that I made for my tutorial that's sitting over there on the dress form still, the garment that I did for the last tutorial, I mean, I used button, the buttonhole function for the slits in it. I, I used my serger for the bottom, but you could use you could use a zigzag function and put it on like a a a buttonhole or or satin stitch type thing for the bottom. Um, I didn't finish the armholes because you know I just didn't. Um, but you can roll hem those, and you can just do a simple roll hem like once you serge it, 
or zigzag it, just flip it over twice and stitch really close to the edge. That's it. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of things don't have to be that complicated. There are a lot of functions that you can do, even though you might not have the, the, the industry grade machines, um, you can still just go and do something really simple and be done. <clears throat> um, let's see. Um, okay. So, but yeah, it's a Brother LX3125. If you look in some of my videos from the past, I use this machine for everything. Um, I have an older Singer sewing machine too, but I don't really use it because um, it started getting really loud and I was trying to oil it and stuff and it still wasn't not being loud so <clears throat> I stopped using it I got this one and this one is a little quieter but um anywho do 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 okay so you, you want to work with better fabrics than you have at Joann I think I understand what you're saying too because um the Joann's they have either really cheap fabric um that's ugly <laughs> or um and really kind of campy looking like okay i have no problem with like craftsy the craftsy side of sewing i'm just not a craftsy person i like the high fashion side of sewing so i like the more expensive fabrics and stuff like that but even like for my taste i don't even really like joann's that much but that's just me this is me i still go in there and buy fabric and buy you know buttons and this and that and whatever because they have a lot of nice other stuff and patterns and stuff I still buy that but as far as just regular old um you know give me some nice high quality fabric like I even like a lot of the interior and like upholstery fabrics because they're so luxurious looking and like the brocades and stuff like that and the jackets I like those fabrics they look so expensive you know um, anywho, off of that, um, so yeah, I don't really shop for fabric online, so I wouldn't be the best person to ask about that. The places that I know of are, like, within driving distance, and they're, like, warehouse places. So, that's about all I can tell you. I don't really know of any online places, and it wouldn't do any good for me to tell you the places that I go to because you can't get to them, so, um... Anywho, <laughs> what else? Do, 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 do. Okay, next question is from Andre Sampinato. And they left a comment that says, Ga, 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 please. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I could think that maybe it means Lady Gaga, written a whole bunch of times. Maybe it means that. I don't know. Um, or some other stuff. I, I'm confused. Um, <laughs> so if you can give me something more clear than that, that'd be awesome and I will answer your question. Anywho, um, Freya number one, or Freya one says, I think sometime this week I'll upload an Inkscape tutorial about the process I described. So I'll post soon the link. Thanks again for another refreshing video. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Freya Juan was talking the other week about how to cut up patterns and put them on, like to scan them with a big scanner or whatever, and um, put them on the computer and trace over them with Inkscape. And so I've never used that before, and so she was saying that she might even do a tutorial on it. So if she does, I'll just put the link on my video. Um, not this one, but whenever she does it, then I'll put the link on the next video for that. So. Anyway, but thank you very much for your help. I will definitely do that because there might be other people who want that. So, sure, sure, sure. And, um, what else? Yeah, that's it for now. And, oh, this person, I'm just going to spell out the name because I don't know how to say that. Uh, it's lowercase c, capital Q, lowercase u, capital I, Y A H. 1975 says, how do you know how much yards of fabric to use? Um, okay. Basically, you really don't. You learn to eyeball it after, you know, doing it for a while. A lot of this stuff comes with, with time. A lot of the skill and a lot of the knowing stuff ahead of time comes with time. 
I have no idea how much fabric to use for stuff, but personally, um, I always get about five yards or more. I always buy at least five or more yards of fabric if I'm going to get something. If not, to me personally, it doesn't make sense for me to get something less than five yards because I like, you know, to make garments that are kind of showy at times. You know, I might want to do like a suit jacket and other times I might just want to do a pair of shorts and other times I might want to do a nice blouse, I might want to do sleeves, I might want to have all this fullness in the pattern. So you have to be able to compensate for all of that. And then the skinnier the fabric is, the more length you'll need out of it because you still need to compensate for that fabric that you don't have so, and that you're not going to be able to use. So I always do five yards, so that would be something good for you. Just get five yards or more, and you really sh you should be able to make a top out of that, you know, a top, and you might be able to get a skirt out of it too. Um, it just depends on what the pattern looks like, how big the pattern pieces are, you know, but a good rule of thumb for me is five yards or more. I know I can get at least a, a shirt or a blouse or a pair of pants or a skirt or whatever and then depending on how much extra you have um, you should be able to get more than that but most patterns you buy from the store tell you between one to three yards and you should have enough for the project that they have but they have it on the back so like I said five yards should be plenty you might even be able to make the garment twice So. Okay, um, do, 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 do. next question is from 84 Daphne Grace, and she says, how do you, or did you do all of that pattern cutting in one evening? And she was, she was watching the video on this, um, garment, and she was asking, did I do all the pattern cutting in one evening? No. <laughs> that was overtime. Um, a little secret about me, you might think that this is, the worst thing to say, but I don't really even like sewing that much. <laughs> um, and so, personally, like, I try to put as much time into it as I can, but I have to take a lot of little breaks for, because I'll go crazy. Because just sitting there and like, look, staring at this brown piece of paper and drawing forever and doing multiplication and adding and doing proportions, trying to figure out, okay, well, how big does this need to be to fit correctly, and how much ease do I need, and how big is the neckline here, and does it match the the, the neck band, and the wrist, and the waist, and the... There's only so much of that you can take at one time. <laughs> and if you make patterns, or if you sew, you know this stuff takes a long time. It's not something you can get done in five minutes. I wish I was doing makeup tutorials sometime, because that's simple. That's the bam, bam, bam. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you how to put this wonderful mascara on with this auburn, you know, eyeshadow. And done my mascara, done this maybe an hour, hour and a half tops, I'm done. Go edit the video, upload it. It's done. But with sewing, it's like days, man. <laughs> I got to take the pattern cutting and me making the pattern and me tracing the thing and making the design line and cutting it out and you know you know making the pattern adding seam allowances which is takes almost just as much time as just making the pattern just adding the seam allowances to everything and man <laughs> so uh yeah making patterns takes time and I think maybe with time I'll, I'm, I'm always getting better with time I'll continue to get better but, um, yeah. Anywho. So, no, I did not do it all in one evening. How to subscribe to your videos is from Need 25033. Um, there should be a little thing at the top of the video that says subscribe. And, um, you should be able to click it and subscribe to my videos. I think it's going to ask you, like, are you sure or something like that. And hopefully you're sure. <laughs> uh, hopefully you like my videos, you know. Anyway. Um, do, 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 do. you can also go to um, my channel page and you can subscribe there it should be in the same general area the subscribe button um, okay 
Awesome video, says Passion for Life 13. Thank you so much for the tips. I can't wait to try them. You even answered questions I forgot to ask. Continued success. Thank you. Continued success to you and all the people that watch. I want everybody to have better, greater, more wonderful sewing experiences. Sewing is not hard. Sewing is not hard. It is not hard. You can get it. If you feel like you're not understanding something, then that piece that you're trying to do, exactly that might be too advanced. And if you ask enough questions to figure out how to do that, you'll find out there may be something more basic that you don't know how to do. Go back and figure it out. You can do it. It's really not that hard. It's really not that hard. Once you know the basic stuff, you build. You just build on top of it. And do it often. If you really want to sew well, know you're going to make mistakes. You are going to make lots of mistakes. Don't be afraid. Buy some extra fabric whenever you do. Stick to dollar fabric while you're learning. Um, don't buy anything too expensive because you don't want to discourage yourself because not only you just messed up this pattern and cut it out in the wrong size and then you sewed the stitching wrong and now you just messed up this $40 fabric. Don't do that. <laughs> don't take on all these clients and stuff like that if you don't know how to sew well because you're just going to piss them off and be more discouraged in the end, you know. So don't put too much on your plate. Don't try to, you know, enter these competitions and try to prove to everybody that you, you're the best when you don't really know how to sew well yet and you're still not quite sure on your ability. You know, my rule of thumb is if you can't make anything that comes to mind or at least tweak it to where it becomes, instead of just an image in your head, something that you can literally make and have it look damn good, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't enter competitions and do all this other stuff um, because a lot of times competition is for people who really have the best and you want to be prepared to show your best skills and if your best skills are still very elementary then unless it's an elementary competition don't get into it. Um, and especially don't get into it being all boastful and bragging about how you know how to sew and you know you can thread the machine in three seconds you know that's great but you know how's your pattern making skills you know anywho um do 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 I want to answer a couple more I know this is getting very long um let's see do you know where you can find such beautiful lace like those used in the creations of Yolan Chris? You have to check out his 2011 bridal collection, Revival Vintage. It is such an eye candy. Thank you in advance for taking the time to read my question. P.S. I love your videos and your calming voice. The weekly doses of these vids will be as good as medicine. Thank you so much. And that's another one from Freya1. Um, I have yet to look at that, so let me take three seconds and go look at that. Okay, so I just watched some of the Yolan Chris stuff. Um, I watched a video on YouTube. Um, it's on the Fashion TV channel. And it's Yolan Chris plus M. Karen Bridal Wear at Designers Preview White Gallery. Um, and I watched that and I was kind of like, ooh, at first because all the designers before him stuff really wasn't too much to brag about. Um, but when I got to um, his stuff, I actually liked it. The fringe stuff was kind of cute, um, and then it was kind of uneven, and I just liked the lengthy look of it. It was really, really nice. But um, the only place that I know of to find fabrics like that would be at either Golden Door or um, Best Fabrics, and those are two stores that are in our fabric district here where I live in Dallas. So that's about all I can tell you other than that I really don't because like I said I don't shop online for fabrics I just go in person and do all that so anywho thank you for watching that's it for this video I answered a crap load of questions um, I still have a couple extra but those will have to wait till next time um, but that was like 13 questions I just answered so hopefully this video isn't too long anyway I'm gonna shut up talking um, please comment leave me more questions um, so I can do more videos. Um, what else? Um, like it, favorite it, share it, whatever. 
thank you so much for watching and um, until next time keep sewing okay